and there we are so good morning again spring budget 2021 quite a lot actually delivered in this budget um there is a fair bit to go through but i will make sure i stick within my time um hopefully you can all see that and there's nothing particularly no questions or anything else at this moment so a lot of it is the fallout from the coronavirus pandemic and um, still very very topical in terms of business whatever your particular views are of likely to be upcoming. Personally, I think we are due for a huge boom during the second half of this year. There's a lot of people sitting on a lot of money. This is a personal view. Um, I think it's unlikely to taper off significantly during 2022. Um, there's a lot of changes being announced in this budget for 23. Whether they actually happen or not, who knows, because you are probably at the peak of the performance of this government by that point, in which case, if I was Boris, I would certainly be looking at calling an election around that time. I think you've probably got the greatest ability to actually get re-elected at that point. So who knows whether a lot of this will actually come to pass. Um, without further ado, if we get stuck in. Uh, obviously, the, the, the job extension scheme was extended. Uh, this is now being run to the end of September 21. Uh, the job extension scheme being, or job support scheme being the main part of the furlough, uh, as everyone seems to call it, um, one of the main schemes supporting businesses. Even at September, again, the opinion and consensus within the accounting community is that it will um, be extended further with more of the taper being seen. There is a taper being put in, into place. Uh, it is expected that from July, 10% of the amount will be paid by the employer, August 20%, September uh, also 20%. That hasn't yet been confirmed and it does need to be um, set out more fully by HM government. Um, as before, you will need all the documentation, everything else in place that you have for furlough, if that's something that you do want to do. Further grants for the self-employed scheme, the grants um, are claim, must be claimed by the, the actual individual. They're claimed in exactly the same way. If you, if you go to Google and type self-employed grant, you'll find the links on the .gov UK website. The um, specifics of the scheme do seem to be tightening up significantly. Uh, the first one was basically here, have some money. And then after that, you've got to make more and more declarations. Uh, we are already starting to see inquiries coming through on these and uh, well, both these and furlough, actually. Um, we've had half a dozen on the self-employed grant and about a dozen on furlough. Uh, of the dozen on furlough, probably 60% of those are now closed with no adjustment. There's 40% of those still being argued about. One of those is, is actually proving to be a bit of a test case. Um, I hate test cases because it means loads of costs for somebody, but there is a techie point in there, which I suspect will come up more and more. On the grant side of it, I am certainly seeing a lot of people who have claimed the grants that shouldn't have done. Um, if you are in that group and that group is you experienced a 30 percent uh, or less than a 30 percent. This is the people who should not have had the grant. If you've experienced less than 30 percent decline in your turnover and your uh, profitability, you probably shouldn't have claimed the grant. And if I was you, I'd be looking to make a repayment of it. For those of you that, that did actually claim properly, the fourth and fifth ones are due now. Again, like the others, they're based on 80% of the average trading profits that you have had. They will take into account, though, your 2019-2020 tax return, which was due for filing by the 28th of February this year. Um, if you missed out on the earlier ones, you may still get the fourth and fifth ones. So you may not have been eligible last year because you're a new business, but you may well be eligible this year. Um, and Scotland and Northern Ireland have different rates. Uh, four things. Restart grant is one that I'm getting lots of questions about at the moment. Uh, Non-essential businesses would be able to receive up to £6,000 per premises. 
Um, hospitality and leisure businesses, gyms and personal care will be able to receive up to £18,000. The increased funding will also occur in the devolved nations. To claim these, you do it through your local authority. You go to your local authority website, put restart grant and follow the links through. Not yet seen anybody actually get any of these. Do know loads of people have made applications for them. Um, hopefully you will do. And if you do, please do let me know. I can be contacted at inquiries at UK ccm.com. Um, just make it the attention of Robert Newman. Always happy to, to help in any way I can, but also actually do like to know what's going on. One of the very topical ones at the moment, it's the last day of C bills and B bills. Um, bounce back loans and coronavirus business interruption loans. These have proved uh, groundbreaking. Um, it's the first time in 12 years that uh, small businesses have actually been able to get any funding from anything other than uh, invoice discounting. There's millions and billions have gone out in these things. Um, certainly all the clients I work with, I think there's been a 99% take up on although I was actually still getting inquiries about them last week. Uh, to be clear, CCM as a business don't actually do invoice, uh, so don't actually do commercial finance anymore. Once upon a time we did, it became an increasingly regulated business. So what we do is we have a couple of people we introduce you to. Um, if you are looking at our YouTube website, one of whom is actually on there, Mr. Steve Monroe, he's a good guy. I talked to him about what is available for small businesses in terms of finance, please do have a look at that video. Steve's contact details are also just underneath that video if you are looking to raise small business finance. Um, the successor to the C bills and B bills is the recovery loan scheme. The recovery loan scheme um, is the uh, very much formatted in the way that um, the um old uh, enterprise initiative scheme is 80 percent of the amount you borrow up to 10 million pounds is guaranteed by the government um of that 80 percent that's guaranteed the you still have liability for 20 percent um loans have to be between 25,000 and 10 million pounds asset finance invoice finance do also still apply to these it is the decision of the individual lender these and um, they won't be as easy to get hold of in, as B bills and C bills were. The individual lender has to put you through a credit um, process. Most of those are quite hard to actually get through. Again, why it's probably useful to have an independent loan person available to you. Um, just trying to find out where's best to actually place this. Yeah, uh, but most of these are probably, to, it's probably best to have an independent loan person available to you. Um, the You will also find that just because you've been turned down by one lender doesn't mean you're always gonna be turned down by all lenders uh, as would ha have been the case under C bills or B bills. Um, it's still probably worth going to your own bank first. If Even if you have received C bills and B bills, you are still, eligible to seek these uh, it'd be interesting to see how the scheme develops i will post up something probably in about september as to what we've seen uh, at the moment these are due to run only until the 31st of december again the consensus is it's likely that these are going to be extended moving on business rates business rates um again there's going to be a hundred percent holiday for the first three months from March, April, May, June for hospitality and leisure businesses, and then a reduction for the remaining nine months um, at two, capped at two thirds of the business rates due. Um, yeah, business rates are irksome. Um, they, they are a significantly regressive tax in my opinion and put undue strain on small businesses particularly with retail premises we will see what happens if there is anything further or reviewed with those but certainly worth claiming the exemption if you are in some sort of retail shop front type premises uh, universal tax credits have been extended the 20 pounds allowance continues hopefully no one on this call needs those but if you do it is still going to be there personal tax 
Personal tax has been largely unchanged to the extent that the personal allowance is going to be frozen until 2016. This, in effect, puts up personal tax. Yep. By freezing the allowances, they know that inflation is going to increase over the next couple of years. It's estimated to be around the 2% mark. Um, 12,570 quid. I wish they just left it at 12,500 because I could remember that easier. Um, bans are going to be 0 to 37,700 at 20%, 37,701 to 150,000 at 40% and over 150,000 45%. Biggest thing to watch out for there is the taper to your pension um, for every, oh, and the, well, Taper actually to pension doesn't won't be as bad because that's actually increased to two hundred forty thousand pounds, but the withdrawal of the personal allowance over one hundred k means that if you earn over one hundred twenty five thousand one hundred forty, according to my notes, um, you have no personal allowance. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It's the way they're starting to pay back for um, coronavirus. Not going to cover Scotland. Dividend bans remain unchanged. 7.5%, 32.5%, 38.1%, 2,000 pound tax-free allowance. With the freezing of the personal band and the increase to corporation tax, something I am going to talk about a little bit more in, in, in coming. Um, it, what I think what this means is the tax incentives from 2023 to become a limited company are entirely gone. Um, I don't see that as being of any benefit from a tax point of view whatsoever. Yes, you re retain the benefits of um, limited liability, but um, specifically incorporating just for the tax, mm, yeah, kind of useless from this stage onwards. Um, the marriage allowance remains capped. Most people, again, don't actually qualify for that. National insurance remains unchanged. Um, if you are self-employed, that it kicks in at £9,568 per annum. Um, typical employee is also going to be due at 12 plus one national insurance. Um, Upper earnings is £50,270. Again, for the self-employed, that's going to remain unchanged as well as bar the 70 quid increase that they've put onto it. Nothing particular there, but again, probably going to be more relevant as and when small company corporation becomes less applicable. For a number of the people on this, this webinar today, I know you are will writers. I'm providing a free CPD service to the world writers around the UK. So inheritance tax is something that you are going to see and be quite conscious and aware of. Again, the bans have been frozen at 325,000. As you will very much be aware, this has been the case now for many, many years and has dragged a lot more people into inheritance tax, despite having the exemption for the main residents. Um, yeah, what do we say to this one? There was talks two years ago, 18 months back, of actually getting rid of inheritance tax. Uh, it's a very unpopular tax, but that does not seem to have happened. No one seems to be interested in it again now. And it is being seen as a way of raising revenue for coronavirus. Um, looks like uh, you are still going to have to have some significant thought to estate planning. There are plenty of videos that I have put up about estate planning for tax purposes on my YouTube channel if you'd like to see them. I am still an advocate and fan of family investment companies. Um, these are still shrouded in a mystery. I don't see why they are just limited companies used slightly differently, but please do have a look. Uh, pensions, pension annual or the the lifetime allowance has been frozen it is now an odd number of one million seventy three thousand one hundred pounds this is frozen until april 2026 again what this is doing is dragging more people into the pension tax charge inflation is being felt um, you are charged 25 percent of the value of the scheme over this lifetime allowance more and more people are falling into that as they are funding pension schemes. Oh, excuse me. Um, again, this is how they are going to get round 
their um, pledges in the manifestos not to increase taxation, but simply come up with clever, sneaky ways of dragging more people into it. Um, low mortgage deposit scheme, 95% of the value of the mortgage will be guaranteed by the government, meaning up to £600,000, meaning that you only need um, a 5% deposit. Being incredibly slow from what we can see for anybody to actually offer these. Um, I don't believe there is any high street lender yet actually offering these. And this is nearly a month after it was announced. Um, I don't think this is going to be anywhere near as popular as was first said. Again, you've got to go through a credit assessment process by a financial institution, and most of them just don't want to lend at that value. Um, stamp duty land tax, uh, very relevant if you are buying selling property or considering estate planning with family investment companies. Um, the It's currently zero on main president main properties up to five hundred thousand pounds and this will cease at the end of uh september uh, it will then revert back to being the rate it was before which is the first hundred and twenty five thousand pound at zero percent and then the tiers after that uh the three percent charge will continue and is continuing on second properties um again yeah not the, I, the the best of things it's um nothing particularly exciting to be mentioned in there but do please be aware of it if you are thinking of moving house um again the personal opinion is this is likely to be extended come september as with a hard close it's like to just plummet and fall off the floor for the market uh, capital tax, capital gains tax unchanged, 12,300 personal allowance till April 2026. Um, representative exemption ex, uh, exemption will also be frozen at 6,150 until April 2026. Uh, gift holdover relief will not be available where a non-UK resident disposes of an asset to a foreign controlled company. Um, yeah. No surprises there, basically drag more people into it and claim. Company taxation, this is probably the biggest change. Rate will remain at 19% until 31st of March, 2023. Uh, from 1st of April, 2023, the main rate becomes 25% applying to profits over 250,000 pounds. What this does is create essentially three bands, 50K and under, 19%, 250 and over at 25% and stuff in the middle between 50 and 250. And believe it or not, the stuff in the middle pays tax at 26.5%. This is called marginal rate relief. Um, it's not a relief, it's quite the opposite. Um, this is harking back to old rules that have probably being forgotten by a lot of accountants, but I am of the generation that still remembers them, when it used to be 300,000 pounds and 1.5 million pounds, and you had a load of stuff in the middle that uh, then you got taxed very heavily. Um, it's likely that associated companies will be included in this. So if you have two companies and you are the 100% owner or the 51% owner of each of those two companies, or in fact, the 25% owner, of each of those two companies and each make a hundred thousand pounds the band for you is not 50 50 it's actually 25 25 meaning 75 thousand pounds of each of those profits will be at 26 and a half percent in other words, you have to take those bands and divide it by the number of associated companies. What this means is there's going to probably be lots of small businesses who need to look at their structure because they are going to push themselves into marginal rates of tax at 26.5% being the worst possible place they could be at. Um, this is a very accountancy wonky thing. Uh, I would urge you to go and speak to somebody that you, I'm happy to have those conversations. Um, planning your companies is outside of the realm of compliance services and most accountants are happy to have conversations about the as well I, but if they, you actually want written advice on how to structure it, probably will seek to charge you, including myself. Um, 
be aware of this though it's likely to catch out loads of people um, at the time um the next two things uh, the cynic in me doesn't see them as most of the way the rest of the way the world does that's investing in equipment and corporate trading losses um, investing in equipment from 1st of May, uh, 1st of April, even 2021, if you buy brand new plant and machinery, it must be brand new, not just new to you. It cannot be secondhand in any form. Uh, you can get 130% write off for the value of that plant and equipment as opposed to 100%. If you sit and do the maths, it actually works out as being 100% when taxes are at 25 and 26.5%. Um, they're actually not particularly accelerating things. What they're trying to get you to do is not wait for the future, but give you the same tax relief now as you will be charged from 2023 onwards. Um, thus giving them a bit of an uplift in the economy now um, and not actually costing them anything extra it's not quite as good as it first appears is in other words it's not bad it's not doing you any disservice but it's not amazing uh corporate trading losses again it, this is a very cynical one they are allowing you to carry back trading losses for three years on a first in first out basis no sorry a last in first out basis i think it must be uh, come on, train losses from and carry back and the cameras and these losses. Yeah, it's a last in, first out basis. Now, uh, this also applies to self employed trading losses. Now, again, this is very cynical because if you carry back losses now, uh, you're going to be getting tax relief at 19%. Whereas if you carry them forward, you're going to be getting tax relief at 25 and 26.5%. Um, it's been dressed up as a measure to um, help people through coronavirus. In reality, it's to get you to use up the losses before they actually give you more tax relief in the future. I know I am a cynic, but then tax does that to you. Um, if you don't desperately need the cash flow, my advice to you, and you have trading losses for the last year as a result of the pandemic, um, I would be urging you to sit on them and wait for the future. Um, they are going to be more beneficial in a couple of years time than they will be right now if you don't actually need the cash. Depends whether you need the cash or not. If you do, well, clearly that's what you're going to have to do. Research and development patent box. Uh, I love research and development. We do a lot of it at Carter Collins and Meyer. Um, small businesses often overlook it and probably still do qualify for it. Um, the rules around it are being tightened up. There's been lots and lots of abuses. We see those as well from some unscrupulous agents who create very exaggerated claims shall we say um the other thing that you are going to have to bear in mind is any state aid received in the last year is going to have to be considered as part of the r d that includes furlough payments grants and c bills and b bills um that's also being restricted to the uh, amount um i haven't actually got it in those notes from memory it's three times the it's the three times the, P, the PAYE charge of the company uh, plus 100% of the actual expenditure. Um, worth checking if you do have an R&D claim as to whether this is going to affect you or not. Again, fairly technical point, but you can find in new startup companies particularly that have had lots of external expenditure this is going to be an issue uh if you're an ongoing company that doesn't do r r d is often misled people think of people in labs it's not necessarily but it, it can be developing products and things um but it, it in startup phases it is going to have a restriction to you uh vat remains pretty much unchanged car benefit is pretty much unchanged bear in mind cars and limited companies that really really don't work very well together unless you're buying 100 electric um i'm not at the 100 electric stage yet um i still don't see that there's enough electric charging points around i'm still on fossil fuels although my new car which is due in june is apparently a hybrid uh, and even though i didn't actually expect that um and before anybody asks it's only boring 
my car it's only a ford focus but it does actually come apparently as i say from now on it is a, a hybrid so anyway um i wouldn't put i wouldn't put cars in with inside limited companies cars and sole traders and partnerships do often work very well um i think that's again part of the reason why incorporation will be seen less Certainly, I run most of my business through an LLP, a limited liability partnership. Uh, a lot of professional service firms do, and cars and LLPs do tend to go quite well. Um, again, it's a specific calculation. You do have to do the numbers. Um, there is usually work involved in that, and it does mean that there is a charge. However, on our website, there is a company car tax um, calculator and if you want to sit and chunk some numbers out for yourself you can actually do the calculations as to whether it's worthwhile doing it or not our website being uk-ccm.com one thing to watch out was their uh, ruling for coca-cola recently regarding vans um a lot of vans are actually now deemed to be cars um do be careful uh double cabs and think alike the the are probably caught by a lot of these this new ruling for, with coca-cola um, it must be a true commercial vehicle that has a payload of a, a, at least a ton in the back of it um, again you probably need to probably outside the scope of this particular webinar and you do need to take specific advice but the go-to of buy a mitsubishi warrior probably doesn't quite apply as it once did um, if you are in a limited company, the cheapest way to still fund your car is claiming business mileage, 45p a mile for the first 10,000 miles, um, 25p a mile thereafter. That remains unchanged and has been the same now for years and years. Um, it does mean you have to keep a note of your business mileage. The easiest ways of doing that nowadays is probably on apps. There's loads of them you can download for free for phones. Um, I am still fairly old fashioned and tend to write all this sort of stuff down. I find pen as much as I use mobiles and stuff. I still find pen and papers and the easiest way of doing things. Um, and that being one of them. Cap allowances for cars. Um, cap allowances. If you buy a car, it doesn't qualify for 130 percent write off. It has to be planted machinery. Potentially that does include vans, although there is some uh, grayness around that and no clarification as yet. The first year allowance of 100 percent is available on fully electric cars. Uh, and this has been extended until 2025. Um, yeah, uh, I still, again, this isn't commentary, this is just me as a car user. I still think we're probably going to end up with hydrogen as opposed to electric when it comes to it. Batteries are massively still inefficient and you still end up making loads of lithium waste everywhere and then precious metal usage and i don't think they're as green as everyone seems to think they are initially i think a bit like diesels a few years ago were seen as the miracle and then suddenly realized that they weren't i think electric is going to be quite similar myself and i think we will end up in a different place which again probably why i wouldn't commit at this point to putting a charging point in at home and driving around in a tesla um landfill taxes remain pretty much the same um help to grow scheme Scheme aimed at small uh, companies, again, very applicable to the sort of clients that we work with, become more productive um, with access to some of the UK's top business schools. Businesses receive expert technology advice and discounted software with the aim of sparking innovation. Um, eligible SMEs would be given vouchers up to 50% off the purchase price of productivity enhancing software up to the value of £5,000. So if you are looking at doing something that you think could make your business more efficient and involve software, it could well be worth looking at the Help to Grow scheme. More detail and availability to claims at the .gov.uk website. Um, I wouldn't do this if you were just trying to do it if you just for the sake of doing it but if you are already thinking of investing in some sort of software to make your business more efficient it could well be worth having a look at this to see if any of the claims can be um used very topical is the new regime for late filing of returns um, there's a massive change coming to tax in the next couple of years which is mtd for income tax 
MTD first started a few years. It's been talked about for years and years and years. It first kicked off a couple of years ago with for VAT. Um, it's coming to income tax from 2023. Uh, in so doing, they're bringing in a late filing, uh, a new and revised late filing regime. Um, they're not specifically at this stage linking it to MTD, but it's very clearly meant to be. Um, if you have over £10,000 of income from a trading activity or property, you will fall into being caught by new MTD. Let me say that again. If you've got more than £10,000 of income from a trade or property or both, you fall into MTD. Um, what this will mean is you must file quarterly tax returns. Well, so if at the moment you have one buy to let property and one trading business, you are a plumber and you are VAT registered, you currently put in five returns to HMRC a year, being four VAT returns and one tax return. Under the new regime, the same person will file 15 tax returns, one five tax returns per year. Uh. Um, the massive increase in these is coupled to late filing penalty increases. Um, it will be £200, not £100. It will escalate much quicker than it has done historically. And it will um, be in more painful than it ever has been. Quite clearly, this is all happening so that they can make us all pay tax on a quarterly basis rather than a yearly basis. Um, it will also prompt more tax inquiries because the figures are not going to be as polished by the time they're sent in for most people because most people won't want to pay for a full set of accounts to be done and will be filing more estimated figures. This will give HMRC more visibility as to how business owners massage their earnings. Um, it will also create a lot more fluctuations in tax payments and I can readily foresee big payments in one quarter trying then to reclaim in the next and lots and lots of more work for everybody including me and all small firms of accountants. Within the accountancy industry, it is certainly prompting older practitioners to give in. Uh, we're seeing more people retire than ever before. Um, it is a fundamental change. The, cha the last big change like this was probably 1997 with the introduction of self-assessment. Uh, do be aware of it. It is coming very, very soon. If you are not using computerized records, you really are not going to have much choice ongoing. These do not have to be full double entry records. There are still ways to not be an accountant and satisfy the criteria for this whilst keeping your costs relatively reasonable. But again, you will need to go and seek specific advice from somebody. And I'm sure I will be running webinars in the future closer to it as to how you might achieve some of these things. Um, that's it. That's topical tax tips for this time, how to pay less tax. Um, there's nothing good news in any of it, I'm afraid. There's no massive, wonderful things. I think it comes down to if you want to undertake any form of tax planning, you are looking at pensions and tax efficient investments, things like EISs and VCTs, um, both of which are retaining their tax efficiency at this time. And certainly if you are a higher rate taxpayer, you want to be considering both of them. I am thinking of running a how to organize your finances webinar where I'll talk more about personal tax savings and how to fund ISAs using VCTs and all this kind of good stuff. Um, I have to be careful not to veer into financial advice. Um, I don't have authorization from the FCA in terms of specific financial advice. I do have access to financial advisors, 
and can certainly put you in touch with appropriate people if that is something you want to do. I do talk about all of this, though, in terms of tax planning and tax ideas. Um, thank you very much for listening. My name has been Robert Newman, or is Robert Newman even, uh, Tax Director of Carter, Collins & Myers. Very much appreciate your time. If anybody does have any questions, I will hang around shortly for a, or we'll hang around for a while but um if not i will see you at the next uh webinar that we run <laughs>